we we've gone through in detail, as have millions of people on the platform, explained that the business cycle is the driver of asset prices. We are just picking up in the business cycle. We're early stage, so therefore this is not the time to worry about selling out of your assets. Oh my God, are we peaking? Sure, can you have an air pocket? Can you have a correction? Absolutely. But this is not the time. I, you know, I urge you to watch the business cycle courses. For a considerable amount of time, Raul Pal, the CEO and founder of Genuine Vision, has been talking about the banana zone, the business cycle, global liquidity, and how these things affect the pricing of cryptocurrency assets. The former Goldman Sachs executive claims that there is a strong, nearly perfect link between the cycles of the cryptocurrency market, US election cycles, and global liquidity cycles. This is a result of the choices that central banks made as a group following the 2008 global financial crisis. I just, I'm here to make money. And if it's not outperforming Solana, go in the fucking dustbin. Um, impeccable taste tonight from John Crichton, Alberino. From Riesh Bash in Galicia. There's the wine again. Zarate El Palomar. I don't know this one, just bought it from the shop. That's Riesh Bash. I don't know if you can read that. Um, maybe you can. So you can understand how it's spelt. 12.5%. Not too high alcohol, not the stupid 14% white wine shit that people are selling now. It's just elegant. You know, we're trying to live a civilized existence, as I say. Um, Paola uh, Goldbin, good wine, Alberino. Thank you. Um, YS, keto is shit, not, not sustainable. Calories in, calories out. Fuck, I've been on keto for years. Uh, it actually, um, it's not the case, but anyway, I'm just, I don't have time to go through that. But yes, calories in, calories out matters a lot. Um, Simon de Santos and Portugal. I presume that's talking about Portuguese wine, which is amazing. I was in Portugal um, after the Global Macro Investor Round Table, when was it March, April? Uh, went to a beautiful uh, um, Vineyard there as well. Drunk some fresh, beautiful um, Portuguese wine. So it's good. And Portuguese uh, seafood is good because the Atlantic Coast. Um, hi from St. Louis, Obisco, California. We're cultured folks here. Really? I've never heard that. Um, okay. I'm, oh, fuck, there's so many of you. Um, Derek Roberts, again. So, Derek, you've had two questions. And I think we read up your trade idea. Raul, you've been clear about your own strategy of not trying to time the tops and bottoms of the market. Instead, sending mostly all in throughout the cycles. However, the selection of assets and portfolio allocation of uh, variables, important variables in the strategy. Yes, as you know, I've gone from being all Bitcoin to all Ethereum to all Solana. So it, even if I stay in cycles, asset allocation is crucial. Uh, I don't know what the next asset allocation is, so I, I am where I am. And I'll do the work when I decide. Um, banana zone. Uh, I want that shirt. So Thor, I want that shirt. Um, right, I'm just going to share the platform again. Because this is important. This is very important. Uh, can I do it on the Safari version? Yeah, I can. Uh, can I? Yeah, maybe I can. Might got all weird because that's me lagged on the screen because I'm having to read the questions here. But if I go and turn to here, oh, you won't see it. It launches the merch shop window. Oh, there it is. Sorry. The w merch store window. Go there. All of the merch is there. It's amazing stuff. There is Banana Zone merch coming. I just want to be in the Banana Zone first and not fucking jinx it. So anyway, that's that bit. Let me go back to the questions. Okay. 
Powell thinks that given the precarious state of affairs, with most of the world's economies on the verge of total collapse, central banks should band together to initiate a debt jubilee. This would enable them to reset their enormous debt expenses to zero, and then periodically print money to save the market from another impending collapse. The first section of Powell's thesis on the Everything Code is this. For as long as necessary, central banks will keep printing money on a regular basis to support the markets. According to Powell, these rescue operations occur roughly every 3.5 to 5 years, and since 2008, they have essentially controlled the cyclical fluctuations in the financial markets and business cycle. When central banks print fiat currencies, they debase them and asset prices rise, creating bull markets. When things get too hot, they stop printing and remove some liquidity, creating bear markets. At that point, the cycle restarts. However, even though all asset prices rise against this debasement of the denominator fiat currencies like the dollar, some assets, especially those with more secular trends, perform significantly better than others. Over time, the Bitcoin market has significantly outperformed other asset classes and central bank balance sheets because it is the only asset class that more closely matches this definition. Pal claims that another era of this enormous outperformance is almost upon us, and that as central banks embark on yet another wave of currency debasement to support their economies, the values of crypto assets will likely rise dramatically. In his latest video broadcast, Pal states that he firmly believes that the boring zone is coming to an end, and that the banana zone is about to begin. Based on all the signs, the banana zone will be far stronger than the suppressed 2021 crypto bull. Additionally, he believes that in the upcoming year, the market would rise from little over $2 trillion to at least $122 trillion due to the sharp and unpredictable price movements of cryptocurrency assets. In summary, especially for an ardent Ethereum bull, the freshly authorized spot Ethereum ETFs might not be off to a smooth start similar to what happened with the spot Bitcoin ETFs in January. However, things should swiftly turn around in the upcoming weeks and Ethereum prices will soar. As per reports from James Sart and Eric Balunas, analysts with Bloomberg ETFs ETFs. On the first day of trading, the spot Ethereum ETFs saw net inflows of $17 million, balancing the $17 million black market gain of $84.15. With a strong first day of $266.25 million, Rox ETH AJ led the lead. The tweet was cited by James's Bloomberg colleague Eric Balchunas in a follow up post, which stated that the new eight taking in $590 million on the first day is huge. More than I guessed. The new nine in the BTC race did $720 million, so ETH was 83% of that. It needed it too, because the ETH unlock was also bigger than I thought. Regardless, good to start life in the green at 16 million dollars. Of course, the first few days will be rough, especially with the grayscale bleeding, but once that is fixed, the price of Ether will rise along with ETFs. Let's return to Pal's video, where he discusses market cycles, global liquidity, and the banana zone. Uh, I need t-shirts as well. Yes, they're all there. Merch store, merch store, merch store, tons of cool stuff. The hoodies are cool as shit. Um, the t-shirts are great. But there's also all of the, you know, millennial drinking cups. Why? Why? What is that with a comfort cup for water? What's wrong with a fucking putting your head under a tap and drinking some water? Um, but no, apparently you need to have um, a millennial drinking cup. It's like a comfort blanket. Um, um, Finn, what's your opinion on XRP? Again. I'm not saying XRP won't go up. I just don't want to be trapped into an old trade. It could be great. In fact, let me just have a look on my Bloomberg screen next to me. I don't have to keep pissing around with the other thing. Um, XRP down 2% year to date. Solana up 65% year to date. This is my point. What are you doing? You've missed, you've missed a 70% difference. I, I don't get it. Um, okay, sorry, I'm reading the question. So this is when I get the dumb mouth. Uh, often that. Michael Cole, Musk is a shill. Brilliant. This, thank you for the value add. I love community members like you. Musk is a shill. What, what, what value is that, Michael, to the community? If you've got a point to make, Make a proper point 
with a reasonable, rational argument. That's what Real Vision's about. We're here to respect each other's opinions. The beginning of the banana zone will be indicated by the global liquidity dominoes beginning to fall into place. The Bank of Canada lowered its benchmark interest rate to 4.5% on Wednesday, and additional rate reductions are expected soon. Should inflation keep down, cuts the budget cuts for this week. In a follow-up press conference, Governor Tiff Macum noted that the decision to lower the bank's key interest rates by 25 basis points to 4, 75% percent during the June meeting and to 4.5% on Wednesday is reasonable given that inflation has continued to ease broadly in line with the central bank's forecast with major central banks in Canada. This marks the central bank's second consecutive cut following last month's meeting, when it cut rates for the first time in four years. Sweden, the U.S. Federal Reserve, will eventually follow suit and prices will surge dramatically, signaling the start of the banana zone. Switzerland and the eurozone have already started lowering interest rates and others won't be far after.